All right, you ready? What's up, everybody? This is Kamea. I'm Lee. And, and this, this is, is Brothers. episode two. This is episode two of... What's up, everybody? This is Kamea. This is Ali. And you are watching episode two of Brothers, Brothers Business, Business, and Barbells. Just a little recap. Uh, we got some feedback on the first episode, and as you can see, we needed a little set design change. So thank you, Sana and Rob Perlo from Olympia, Washington. We appreciate the feedback, and you know we're just gonna keep you know making things better for you because uh, your needs need to be met. As as you can see, it's this man. Like we're really putting ourselves out there, and does well, it make you nervous? We, we first like, we first want to tell you that. Um, our first episode, we were really excited about the response. Like our viewership, our subscribership went up eight hundred percent. That's right, eight hundred percent. You don't see those kind of stats just with with anybody. You know what I mean? It's, it's really impressive. I think it's what they call huge. internet YouTube sensation. <laughs> sensation. We just wanted to thank you. We've almost reached our goal of ten subscribers, and. That's uh, right. I mean, once we do that, I don't even know where we go from We're there. pretty much done. <laughs> you know, our goals with the show, we definitely want to reach, like, Jack the Mooney status. Uh, mm. He, I don't even know what he does at BYU, but he works for the BYU football team. He plays a lot of golf. Plays a lot of golf, but, like, when he posts on Facebook, a lot of people watch. And, and people uh, listen to him. Jack, if you're watching, we're coming for you, buddy. That's right. We're coming for you. The Mooney status. <clears throat> so when we hashtag the Mooney status, now you know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So our three things we're going to talk about today. Uh, number one is a DNA business that uh, we came across. Ancestry DNA. And uh, what you do is you open up the box and you get this like spit vial. And you spit in it. Then you send it to a lab. And six weeks later... It's you know what? Like, like, yeah. this, this, hold on for a second. It's like five in the morning, and I have to explain something to you. So, Ali and I were married. We got kids. Not to each other. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure they didn't see our animal magnetism. We were not a good pair. Anyway. <laughs> so, it's 5 a.m. in the morning, and I just need to explain something. We kind of have this unspoken deal with our wives that we can't do things like this at regular hours because they think it's a waste. They, it's hard to explain to our wives why doing a YouTube video or YouTube show and being an internet sensation is like worth it. And it's just hard for them to understand. So um, you know why, but they just don't get it right now. So that's why we got to do things at really odd times in the morning. So. It's 5 a.m. We're doing this video, and just so you know how much sacrifice we're putting in to entertaining you for free, uh, we hope that you appreciate it. So anyway, this is the business, Ancestry DNA, and you spit in this vial, your vial spit, and they analyze it in a lab, and then they tell you which country your DNA is from. Now, I was thinking about it, and... This could be a really dangerous or exciting thing because say you like really don't like Europeans or you hope that you're not from Asia and then you find out the truth, then what? Are you going to be mad or are you going to embrace it? And that's kind of the question I have for you. Like if you found out the truth of your identity, is this going to be like, is it going to crush your world or is this going to make you happy? And so that remains to be seen. In, in four to six weeks, I'll find out. I'll give you a report. And I guess that would be your DNA too, right? So we don't need to get two tests because they're pretty damn expensive. Well, so. I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> planning on paying for it, so I was just going to follow whatever your DNA test was. So, yeah, I'm going to find out what's in my DNA, and then I can tell my kids where they're really from. And so we think we're from, I don't know, Canada. Our dad's like part Irish too, and well, then our mom. Pretty sure we were we were from Canada. No, I know, but like, 
Hey, you know what I'm talking about, dude. You're not a DNA expert. No, listen. This is kind of just part of our um, our process and creating and understanding what our identity is. And I think that that's important for us. It's important for our kids. And we really want to start building something that's pretty comprehensive because I think that uh, their success, our success, is really contingent on us understanding who we are. Yeah, and as a business, it's cool because they, even though they charge a lot, like how much is it worth for you to know who you are? Oh my God. <laughs> this is really deep at five a.m. Oh. Deep at five a.m. Okay, so Goodness. that's the business thing. Check it out, Ancestry. Got to I think there's another one, Twenty Three and Me. I mean, Ancestry. Um, dot com isn't sponsoring us yet, but <laughs> <laughs> if you're out there, send us some batteries because the cameras they always run out and it's just really hard to keep buying batteries. Anyway, mm. so that's the business portion of it. Now we get on to the family portion, and this this is something that came up yesterday that kind of bothered me, and it's it's cussing and like swearing and using language like that. There's two things that really bother me about cussing because in our family, I mean, we have some relatives, we've heard them cuss, you know, occasionally under people's breath at a football game or a basketball game, we've heard people cuss. But here's my thing about cussing. If you're gonna do it, it's gotta be authentic. And if you're just doing it for the sake of being like, offensive to people or like posturing and trying to look tough that's the most annoying kind of cussing so let me tell you about the greatest cusser in the world Tupac Shakur like when he would cuss like when people usually cuss the the regular reaction is oh my goodness that was offensive but when he cussed there were times when I was like you know what I that makes sense. You know, it sounds like your situation was pretty hard. When you hear certain people do it in the right context, it's authentic. Now, for the rest of you who cuss, I don't like it because you're just trying to be annoying and you're just trying to be really loud and obnoxious. And so that's my problem with cussing. The second thing I wanted to say is realize you're kind of attaching a lot of meaning to these words. I mean, sometimes we say stuff that aren't cuss words and people are like, oh my goodness. And it's like, or sometimes we hear relatives say things that aren't cussing, but, but like they're trying to make it sound like it. Like we have an uncle who's like, criminy. <laughs> like, like what, what, why don't you that? just say it? If you're going to be that mad, like just say the word or they're like, son of a bishop. I'm like, man, don't go halfway. This is what I'm talking about. Don't go halfway. Be authentic about it. All in. Go, go all, all in, in or don't go all in. So we attach meaning to these words. And for example, some of you are going to get offended, but just realize I'm saying the word cat. Okay? <laughs> and like some of you have this like emotional response. Ah, he's cussing because of the little bleep sound. I'm only saying so stop being offended, you d <sighs> Anyway, that's all I got to say about cussing. Just do it. If, you, if you're going to do it, be real about it, authentic about it. Otherwise, it's like really annoying when you're in a restaurant and you see this little dude like, oh, and he's cussing the whole time and you're like, man, I got kids here. Like, stop it. <sighs> anyway. So that's, that's all I got for the, the family. But what do you what do you think about cussing? I um, that's it's personal to me, and it's something that I <laughs> it is it's deeply personal. Say it's personal. It's personal. <clears throat> okay. So the last part we wanted to talk about was um, about lifting and and losing weight. So in the comment section, Uncle Joe straight up said, "Y'all need to add some like." salad to your diet uh -huh. now here's the thing it's not that easy joe it's not it's like me saying you know go out and build a house there's books on how to build a house but it's not that easy you don't just go and build a house well uncle joe knows how to do that too <laughs> no so uncle joe 
Like, we know you're in good shape, man. It's one thing that when we see you, we're yeah. like, man, Uncle Joe, you look How good. Do it? How do How you do, do it? it? It's amazing. And, you know, we're trying up here, but like, last night, Elite texted me and he's like, hey, you got any donuts? I it's, totally it might did seem, not do that. It might seem like we're out of control and that we don't know how to like... We know what to do, but it's still hard. There's nuances of eating healthy that we haven't mastered yet, that we haven't internalized. The systems are not working for us. So, just relax, okay? That's our advice for losing weight is we have none because we haven't done it yet. And that's the whole premise of the show is we're only going to talk about stuff that we're doing. But we are going to reach out and invite you to give us some recommendations because we have tried a lot of different fad diets. Oh, yeah. Um, Remember you lost a lot of weight on uh, Ideal Protein. I did. That was huge. And Mom then, said you looked like you did in high school, which is like which is, 10 pounds lighter than you do now. Right. Maybe even 15. And, and they worked momentarily, but as soon as you incorporated the carbs back into your diet, then all of a sudden it was it was over again. So we do need a lifestyle change. We know yeah. that we have to increase in the amount of, you know, fruits, vegetables, uh, you know, and because wholesome grains that like, we I had a trained. trainer, right? You do? No, I had a trainer. Oh, okay. But his problem was when he gave me a diet, he didn't realize I wouldn't follow it. So you know, another epic fail. And all yes. we're saying is, for those that go, ah, it's so everybody, easy. It's, it's everybody not, else. That's right. It is everybody It's not else. easy. <laughs> it's not easy to lose weight. It's not easy to trim down. And there's a lot of little things that go into it that we haven't discovered yet. So, well, Like discipline. The sprinkles. Well, <clears throat> that's our show for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, please keep giving us comments. We actually got a question that we're going to be addressing in the next episode by by one of our followers, one of our subscribers, and just know we really appreciate the love because it's five in the morning and we're tired, but we're doing this because no one else in our family will listen to us. And you know what, our, our man Dave Penner in Southern California. Dave, what's up? Dave, do we appreciate you, appreciate your commentary. Like there's, there's, a, there's like six comments and half of them are from David. <laughs> Thank you. David, for, for thank reaching you. out, thanks for reaching out, encouraging us, and and like even if it's just a joke, we still appreciate it. Like, thanks for the encouragement. Absolutely, peace, guys. Let it. Oh no, wait, we gotta end it right. Uh, thanks for watching. You've been watching Brothers Business and Barbells. your money on that sweet love girl the kind of put them honey on the dim sum girl so you can keep it coming i put on my slipper so we can keep it running